Welcome back to yet another episode of the Launch Problem Solver Series, where we quickly help you find the solutions to everyday automotive challenges using the tools, repair techniques, and resources of Launch products. My name is Harry Scoven. I'm the Product Development Manager here at Launch. And today, I'll be teaming up with, once again, my good friend, Master Technician Tony Shelton from John's Automotive Care here in sunny San Diego. In today's episode, we'll be covering from beginning to end the process of reflashing a 2009 Toyota Highlander hybrid. We are going to remedy a cold misfire condition in which the ECM needs to be recalibrated. And Toyota has specified this on one of their factory TSBs. We will be using our launch SmartLink VCI, which also serves as a standalone J2534 password device and a standard Windows PC. Pay attention, folks, because there are some critical steps that you do not want to miss. Let's get started. Thank you, Harish. And to get you guys to this website right here, get the ball rolling. And here we are. Here's the home page. So right here is where you're going to click to subscribe for the first time user and need a new account. That's where you'll log in once you've got your credentials. And here's where you manage your account. There's uh, the professional diagnostic. That's the one I have because it includes programming. Uh, if you need security professional, that's for doing keys. Uh, you need a locksmith license to even purchase that one and use it. So uh, here's the pricing. Here's what it costs to do two-day, monthly, yearly, uh, however it is you want to break it up. If you're not doing very much of it, you would probably want to do it just two days at a time. Uh, that, that's how we do it right now. Uh, there's some samples down here. I looked at them earlier. There's a, there's actually a lot of really good information around this website. Uh, there's some really good uh, guides and tutorials and uh, quick start guides, stuff to really get you up and running pretty quick. So once you're all logged in, here's the TechStream page, home page. Uh, this is where you'll get your updates. You'll get your full install. Uh, it has all the system requirements and stuff on here that you may need. You want to make sure that you have a dedicated PC for this. You want to make sure your antivirus is turned off. You want to make sure that your computer does not go to sleep, even when it's on battery only, which it never should be, uh, and put a maintainer on that car. Trust me, you want it. Don't want that voltage to drop too low. You can mess things up, ruin your day. So once you've got the TechStream program installed and you go to log in and use it, you need to register it first. Of course, that hasn't changed. So what we're going to do here is you click on the software registration. And it takes you back to this page if you're not logged in because it needs you to you know, put your credentials in and get it unlocked. So uh, there's several things on this page as well. Uh, this emergency response tab down here in the middle uh, is pretty interesting. It's got owner's manuals. Uh, it's got how to dismantle the car for uh, recycling it. Just interesting stuff for people who like to read. Uh, you can check your key codes here and you can also access all the owner's manuals for uh, just about every Toyota made, and they have them in there. It's it's, it's really uh, convenient if you need to get some information that you can't maybe get from the glove box. You know, you never know. So when we log in, uh, it's going to take us to the registration page. Here's where you calculate your key, your registration key, and uh, it's like a thousand digits. So what I do is I just copy and paste it. Uh, that way you don't you know transpose anything. So it'll either work or it won't. So. I just come down here and select all and copy it. And it obviously goes right where it says new key. Uh, the current key is usually displayed right above it, but this was the first time this software had been registered, so it didn't have a previous key. Uh, but when you pull it up next time, you want to check every time you open it. Uh, you may see your old one up there, then you can update it. Uh, also, there's some setup you need needs to be done. Uh, you got to set up the VMM, which is the vehicle interface module. Uh, if you look all the way down here at the bottom, down here, here's the expiration date. Uh, two days, 23 hours, and 59 minutes. Uh, midnight, whatever night it is that from the night that you purchase the subscription is when it expires. It's kind of weird, I know. Uh, I have the launch J2534 
pass through that I'm using. It's actually the uh, SmartLink VCI from the uh, Throttle Throttle uh, 3. And it doubles as a pass through and we were using it here to uh, just display that. And it was recognized by the by the computer once it was plugged in. And all right, cool, the software's up to date. It's correct. And we are ready to rock and roll. Let's get this going. I set up a user account, uh, a pro profile basically. Uh, what it does is it saves it saves all your preferences. I'm the only one who uses this PC, so it's not really a big deal. But if you're in a shop where you have multiple techs that are passing it around, uh, then you would definitely want to have your own settings so that you don't have to change it every single time you get it. And you know, whenever people share these kind of tools, something always gets messed up. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to the vehicle. Click on connect to vehicle and we do the waiting game as it does its little talk and dance. Uh, a lot of this I sped up so uh, we won't be waiting as long because we all know that programming does take time. So uh, just to get the highlights for you, we're gonna move through this a little bit quicker. You may notice uh, some stuff popping up. Don't mind that, that's just, that's just me. <laughs> So here's where it identified the vehicle. And you have a little spot down here where you can put notes. It saves it per VIN. So each VIN would have a different uh, note section. So you can, just things you might want to remember. Maybe like if this was a Honda, maybe you'd want to put radio codes or something like that. Uh, just I just put test vehicle just to put something in there to see where it pops up, where it saves it. Kind of follow that that around and, and see what it does with that information. So now it's still doing the vehicle communication and it will be wrapped up here in just a, a moment so we can move on to the next step. You can do a lot of stuff on this on the site. You can do uh, user uh, accommodations like tire size. Uh, you can modify the thresholds for the tire pressures, much cool stuff. So here's your selection menu. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run a health check. Uh, it's kind of like an all system scan on any other type of scan tool. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to ping all the modules in there that it does or does not have. And it'll come back with a report, which ones have codes, and most importantly, which ones have updates and calibrations that can be done. Because that's what we're here today for. And you can kind of customize what it looks for, uh, just shorten the length of time that it takes if you know exactly what it is that you're trying to pull out of the, the computer. So, you know, I made a couple specific selections here just to, to, so we could get a little bit for a demonstration purpose, but also so that it would go through relatively quickly. Uh, you can also have it store the data, uh, and that's kind of cool. But then again, the files do start to get large, and it does take a little bit longer for it to, to download. So if you know where you're going and you know what you're headed for, like we do in this situation, it's best to just go into the powertrain you'll get there faster and uh, it'll take up less space on your hard drive. This part is where it connects to the, connects the Toyota network and uh, it pulls up like news. Uh, you can see right there, there's, there's news you can scroll through, uh, latest this, latest that, what versions are available, uh, special service messages, all that kind of stuff comes up right there while you're waiting. Uh, normally you're waiting a little bit longer, but I, I took the wait for you. This page under configurations, which is under the calibrations tab, which is under the reprogramming tab, is where uh, you'll put in the VIN and you'll look it up. So this TSB referred specifically to uh, a, a calibration file for a uh, runs rough when cold, uh, like first thing in the morning started up and it would sputter and it just, just didn't run right. Well, they have a, a calibration update for it that is supposed to uh, remedy that. We always want to do that first. If we check all the basics and everything's in place, we'll we'll make sure that the manufacturer side has is up to par, and that we don't have any any out of the ordinary. So, I downloaded the file. This is it. It's a, it's a .cuw. Now, this calibration wizard was installed with the tech stream. It it, it comes with the package as it un, unpack unzips. It has this in there. You don't even see it until later. But here it is on the on the start menu. And we're back to connecting. Let's go.
previously we did the health check we did uh, the calibration check and now looking at the car it gives us the current california cal id and then the uh, new cal id and as you can see there is some changes so that's uh, kind of giving you a heads up of what will change you'll get another copy of that at the end uh, one you can print it's kind of nice in case you want to put it in with the invoice or store it with the customer's files or even give a copy of it to the customer because you know they could they could use it if they go to another shop for some reason all right, here we go with the good old key on, key off par program. So uh, you wanna make sure all the accessories are off, headlights are off, radios off, heat seat heaters are off, all that kind of stuff. Just be wise about it. Make sure the maintainer's on there and uh, just follow the directions. It gets kind of monotonous, but computers can take their time as we can see here. So let's go. And I haven't gone in and looked at that calibration wizard as a standalone program, but there is some stuff in there. So uh, obviously don't disconnect the cable, don't turn off the key, don't apply any loads, and don't allow the battery to go below 12 volts. If you do that, it will abort the programming. It will not let you start. Uh, I know that from experience. So we're gonna make sure this one has a good, good 13 volts. There we go. All right, so this one's on a maintainer. It's not running. <laughs> and let's go. Here we go. Wow, that was one fast flash. That was the quickest six minutes I've ever seen. Yeah, that's, that, I didn't do that. That is what Toyota does. Kind of crazy, huh? I, I thought it was a little out of the ordinary, but hey, it lets you know from across the shop that you're done. So you turn the key off, go ahead and let it power down. Uh, it's gonna read, read it again, and it's gonna give you that same little thing. It says it's successful, you can turn the key off. Uh, and then here's the program report. You can print that out and give it to your customer. Well, there you have it. Another problem solved with a combination of Tony's high level technician skill expertise and state of the art equipment from Lush. We did the best we could to show you every step, including the setup, of the PC and the functionality of installing the Toyota OEM software. This is a very critical step. A lot of people do not show this step in their videos. We hope it was beneficial and you'll be back to join us for another episode of the Launch Problem Solver Series. For more information, visit us at www.launchtechusa.com. Thank you.